My feeling is since the information was released up to today that the collective awareness of it has increased tremendously because each person that will go in and tap into that, even if it's an intention to tap into that, to it, not necessarily, you know, like perceiving it, but it just, I want to tap into that. I want to know what that's like. Opens it up that little bit more. Yeah. Opens that door up a little bit more. And what I perceive now at a human collective level is a type of curiosity and excitement. I don't feel or sense any resistance to it anymore. It's like, oh, what's this? You know, let's take a look, you know. So that's what I feel right now. And of course, uh, what also the book was trying to convey was that um, this was one more choice. You know, now we have choices. We have like dark, like dark, we have dark, we have light, we have uh, both of them like not fighting with each other, but the new element but also there's all these other realities, other um, re uh, earths yeah, that we can step into. And it's like, they're so close to us right now. The veil is so thin. One, one of the things I was talking to Larry about, uh, I think it was last week, we were looking at the um, chemtrails and he asked me, he says, well, what do you think they're for? You know, he's, he's had a few theories through the years about why there's chemtrails. And I was looking at them and I said, well, no, no, I mean, a lot of those make a lot of sense to me. Like, for example, making the physical bodies on the element, the uh, trees and everything really metal heavy so that uh, they can be somehow um, tapped, you know, like um, there's a theory that says, that it would be easier to receive special energy signals and stuff if you have these heavy metals in your body. But I said, what I feel whenever I look at it, it's like every mythology that I've read about throughout the world talks about creatures that are elementals or they look like elves, you know, like the forest elves in the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that who can only or only carry the very high level metals like the gold and platinum that type of metal silver but any low level metals or low level i don't know how to say it more heavy more rough um sharp like like iron or something they can't touch yeah so what i was seeing was that all these heavy metal stuff going into our water, our trees, our grass, our physical bodies, our animals, kind of closes the veil. It's trying like an attempt to close the veil between the dimensions. And it's not just the dimension with the elves, but it would be like, uh, because I mean, who is it really that we were calling elves, right? Um, but for example, the earth that the Lemurians would uh, the, the portals to the Lemurian world are very thin in many places. And there's others as well. There's other dimensions that were becoming really thin. The, the, the world of, the, of plants or the world of rocks, different types of things, but also uh, humanoid worlds that are coexisting co uh, with us in, a, in that type of different depth. You know? And they're thin right now and we do have access to them only if we become curious and start following our resonance really be brave and imagine have a daydream about your perfect world or perfect society and through that you're going to start opening the portals and doors into those types of realities some of them will, will be brand new and some of them will be there already that you can just step into uh, but yeah i think it's really exciting Sorry, I don't remember what the question was anymore. <laughs> I hope that answers it. <laughs> when, when I look at it, as you were describing it, what I see is that it is each individual who will have the ending or their start that most resonates with them. 
When most of the individuals who are alive on the planet today uh, were on the side of um, that, that split, that decided to play the light dark game on the planet. Some of them went in with an energy of holding the light long enough so that it can, can be a choice throughout the ages for other individuals. And also at this, at this time, for it to be a, a, a choice of um, masses, massive amounts of people to, to step into. So they didn't really go in with an energy of growth or development or um, because they needed to evolve or they even wanted to play the light dark game. They went in just to hold that energy throughout the ages. And because they were in a planets in a uh, reality that was playing the light dark games they couldn't they had to they were sucked into light dark warring and games playing both sides sometimes different lifetimes um throughout the ages but they were holding that light the same could be said about the beings who were holding the darkness you know because to play a light dark game you need both and um so and that, then there were other individuals and I'm thinking the majority of those individuals who chose this paradigm was because they really wanted to experience and really be involved in the light dark game, see who was going to win that thing. Um, and it was a different energy. So they experienced the shift differently to the first group. And then there were ones who decided, you know what, <laughs> we're not going to play that game. We're not really going to go there. Um, and they experienced the shift and change differently again, they would have experienced it as moving or creating a reality that was like uh, beautiful. And, um, you know, if you, if you do tap into the Lemurian energy, you can sense that they didn't go through a classicism, but oh, I can't even say the word now, <laughs> um, a disaster, right? A global disaster they didn't they stepped into creating uh, a really supporting beautiful environment and that's their earth that's the earth that they know and really created they didn't have um, the experience of the split and the death and the conquering of the new earth or any of that they didn't have that uh, so at this stage it will very much depend on each person what they decide to do. There are a lot of people who are choosing to continue on a light, dark game because they're light workers and they're, they're not done with their being bodhisattvas, you know, the, the helping others. Um, there's others who are going to stay, again, the same reason, to carry that energy, just be that energy of light uh, throughout the God knows how many thousands of years when that uh, I don't know how long they're going to play that game on the planet um, this time around uh, or their planet I should say <laughs> their version of the earth and then there's others who are experiencing that dissolving of the whole corruption and the power over others and and they're starting to realize or create a reality that's really optimum and supports them and they're really you know in a good place but if you hold on to any of the other energies if you're holding on to the martyr if you're holding on to any type of senior energy or you're going to be sucked into the other you know you really are so i think you know person to person basis of what the split is going to be experienced as that's how I can see it. I, and I, I, I'm watching it, I'm witnessing it with all the people that I know, how they're moving and shifting and what's happening in their own lives is like quite dramatic right now. It's like, whoa, so different for each person. The reality is just so drastically different. The human body, I mean, can generate just about anything. I think somebody measured how much electricity a human body can generate and it could, gen it could power, I can't remember how many buildings in a street or something, um, every minute. 
or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the quote exactly. Could have, maybe it wasn't every minute. Maybe it was in a year. <laughs> but um, yeah, we can generate enormous amounts of energy. If you have ever lived with a teenager, if you remember when you were a teenager, this normally happens as teenagers, but some people still carry it out when they're grown-ups. If somebody gets really angry, all of a sudden their TV will blow up or this, the light bulbs will blow up or sometimes really happy, like an emotional burst, like sudden emotional burst, and light bulbs will blow, TVs, radios uh, melt, you know, won't work anymore ever. Um, and their cell phones, you know, battery will be gone instantly or become extremely hot that they have to drop it, stuff like that. And that's uncontrolled energy generation. Now, if you can think that, if we can create that, uh, and that's part of the keys of um, energy generation. And if you looked into sound gazing or prana breathing, that's just methodology. So ways to convince ourselves and our physical bodies uh, that we are um, absorbing energies from other locations so that we don't need to eat as much or at all. But what's actually happening, because we are one actually with the environment, is that we are actually generating that energy and re reconstructing and reproducing everything we need. So the energy that we can um, drive things with, uh, and the, the AIM spaceship thing is really fascinating because I had the opportunity to touch some metal from uh, the Roswell crash and it wasn't the foil stuff, it was a big chunk of metal um, from one of the farmer's sons who had kept it. And he had it tested and there was no metals that you can find on the planet. When, when I put it on my hand, it was alive. It felt alive, it was like buzzing. And when I tapped into it consciously, I tapped into the, the, the it was like a consciousness. And it was saying, uh, like it was waiting for command, waiting for command, waiting for command, you know. And I was like, whoa, you know, it's waiting for command. <laughs> it wants to know what to do. Um, and that was really, really fascinating. It, it felt like artificial intelligence uh, of a really um, amazing advanced level. Or it could be the... Uh, bringing forth or the uh, a communication line having been generated with material consciousness because everything that's material is conscious. You go into any native methodology or if you are in a country that still has uh, native people ha who haven't lost their culture, uh, you'll find that they would believe and know, they would actually know that the rocks are alive and can talk to them that the water's alive, the, the air's alive, the trees are alive, the plants, the animals, everything. If they go for a hunt, they know it's like a game that they already know this, the result to there, and the animal will often come up to them and sacrifice itself, that thing. So it's like reconnecting. It could be that, that those ships are sentient material um, or that have linked somehow the technology was created that one can link to it um, and it's possible and if that's the case then the possibilities of us creating things on the planet with our own energy or with our own connection is it's huge i mean there's no limit so it's just limited to our imagination if you think about it you know, if you could look at a rock and communicate with it and say can you move shift to the left a little bit <laughs> you could build a house <laughs> um and um i don't know what that channel is exactly but um it's definitely um that information has come through of um, there that's why a lot of the technologies that um are trying to be copied is very limited it's very uh it's not it's like like in the book says you know like driving trying to take off in a plane uh, being pulled by horses you know um but the that that's part of the energy and also part of um 
there's a willingness, I think, in a lot of individuals to step there. But as, as a human species, there's also an enormous amount of fear because not everybody's done with the light dark games or far over other games. And when you step into that type of technology, it's hard for everyone. You know, there's no limit to who you can go to. And that can be seen as, well, if you're all powerful, then who are you going to be powerful over? Who can you exploit? Or some people are just afraid, you know, it's like they, they don't want to have their neighbor be really powerful or whatever <laughs> because they don't trust them. So there's a lot of fears and it's up to us to really look at it, observe it, process that fear and then uh, have daydreams of where we are generating all the power that we need or want to create on this planet from our, through our own bodies. they no longer have an experience of light and dark which is fascinating because they were so polarized that it's kind of it's like a whoa you know um they are the other energy so if you can go into that sense of being uh you it's like the whole privacy thing again there isn't that there <laughs> that doesn't exist there so you can actually have a daydream and imagine what would it be like what was it like what are they doing you know but i mean obviously if they're going to you know having a private moment then you look away <laughs> but apart from that it's like how 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 are they experiencing the planet because earth is like a template if you look and step into or have a daydream or you have heard or read about the different inner worlds or um, the inner earth and all that type of stuff, you'll find that geographically speaking and also the materials and things are very, very similar. So there's oceans, there's the sun, there's uh, trees, there's mountains, there's lakes, there's animals and there's plants. Um, so there's a lot of similarities is it's, it's a very it's like a, there's a template and then the the beings will create their reality on that template which is um so stepping into their new reality if you take the familiarity of what this one has or that template you step into that through that and you can just sit in one of their fields or one of their woods there um there's more than one there's more than one couple there now there's what the i mean two people there's more than two people there there's there's a lot of people there now <laughs> and a lot of them are just hanging out just stepping in and then stepping out it's, and a lot of people don't realize that when they're daydreaming suddenly they'll be there and then they'll get surprised and pull back but even if it's just by sensing i, I can sense it you know like, Whoa, <laughs> what's that you know <laughs> But yeah, you can find out yourself. Just hang out with him for a bit. 